Hi everybody, Mr. Steger here again. Uh, we're in our fourth of four activities for weather and erosion. Uh, let's take a look at temperature weathering. So what is temperature weathering? Well, it, give you a little understanding of this. Temperature changes cause weathering to rocks. Now, weathering is when you're breaking rocks into smaller pieces. The heating and cooling of rocks causes rocks to expand and contract. So they get a little bit larger and a little bit smaller. Now, this, we're talking an infinitesimal size here, very small, but they expand and contract. Now, over time, this causes rocks to fracture into smaller pieces. So you've got a larger rock breaking into smaller pieces. That's weathering. Now, freezing water, if we add water into our mix here and we get temperatures down below freezing so it turns to ice, freezing water will expand in cracks and creates a pressure. And that pressure is pushing out from inside the crack. So it's actually trying to open that crack up. And that also breaks rocks into smaller pieces. Now I've got two examples here. I've got one on the left of freezing and thawing and one on the right of temperature changing. Now it, it's pretty obvious that when you see this large rock here on the left that the cracks in it have increasingly gotten larger and larger. That's Cali. Um, as, try to pay attention to me, as water's gotten into these cracks, it seeped down and temperatures got low enough for the water to freeze and it pushed those cracks open. Now, daylight came, the water seeped in a little bit further and it froze at night and it pushed them a little bit further. Now, I'm making it sound like this happens over the course of a couple of weeks and it does and this takes many, many years for this to happen because there, there are very, very strong forces going on here. So freezing and thawing of water, good example uh, on the left. Now our example on the right is of temperature change. And this is what I was talking about earlier where the surface of the rock is heated, it expands a little bit, and then as it cools it contracts, expands, contracts, expands. Do this over hundreds or thousands of years and pretty soon that rock also breaks down into smaller pieces. That's weathering. Now, I've got a, a kind of a neat example uh, locally, and this is a place that we're going to be visiting. Hopefully, um, you'll be able to go back and, and visit again where you have more time. But uh, the large picture over here, this is of the East Bluff of Devil's Lake uh, near Baraboo. And you can see obvious evidence of broken rock down below. Well, that rock is broken off of these large um, formations of Baraboo Quartzite very, very hard metamorphic rock that was at one time uh, sandstone or sand. And you can see what's happening right here over the winter, uh, spring and fall, water's getting into these cracks and freezing and expanding. And what it's doing is it's, it's starting to work that rock open. Now, we have obvious evidence here of, of a large field. This is talus. It's called talus when it breaks off and creates a, a rubble field like that. So this has all come from the solid formations of this Baraboo Quartzite up, up above it. Um, got kind of a nice illustration that shows you the process. It's kind of exaggerated, but you can see water in this crack. It's pushed on the rock, pushed out, and ultimately it cleaves it off real cleanly. And that same process is what will be happening to these other cracks within this rock. Now, that process, that freezing and thawing of water, is what created this unique formation at Devil's Lake. It's called Balanced Rock. So what's happened on this, and I, I find it kind of amazing that this actually happened, the cracks in the rock that were formed created a, 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 a large boulder, and this thing, when you stand next to it, it's probably two to three times taller than I am. So if I'm standing on this, I'm probably only coming up to about this. So it actually cleaved the base of the rock so it's really significantly narrower than the top. Now this thing weighs tons. Um, but for it to have balanced on this kind of sketchy uh, formation is, I think, really something interesting. All right, our activity. This is highly important. You're going to need safety goggles on this one because we're working with glass and we're working with a heat source. So we we'd never take a risk with that. Make sure you've got safety goggles on. It's pretty simple like most of the others that we've taken place with. Uh, you're going to use tongs, put the marble in the in the beaker. I want you to practice a little bit picking the marble up with tongs. 
uh, place it in an empty beaker, and that beaker is going to have a heat source underneath it. So we'll light the heat source, slide it underneath the beaker, and then we're going to let it heat up for about five minutes. While that's heating up, um, make sure you've got a, another beaker with just some water, just plain tap water, and then another beaker with um, water and ice in it. And I'll have both of those things available for you. After about five minutes of heating, cover the burner, make sure it's extinguished completely. Don't move on until that thing is out. Use the tongs, take it out of the empty beaker, briefly put it in the water, and then place it in the beaker with the ice water on it. And I want you to record on any observations uh, that you might see. And remember that we're sim simulating temperature change here. And it's a pretty extreme temperature change. Uh, record your observations and um, hope you enjoyed it. Thank <laughs> you.